number 64 out of our packet. And number 64 looks kind of like this. It's got two dots that are prominent, and then it's got a line through them. And what does it ask? It says write the equation in slope-intercept form. Well, wouldn't it be nice to know where it hit? I know where it hit. I'm counting up. One, two, three, four, five. I think it hits at five, doesn't it? Is that the fifth spot? Why do I care? Because in the equation, y equals 3x plus 5, that spot right there is that spot. Now, was my slope really 3? No, it's not. So, stay with me now. You're on problem 64. What is the slope of that thing? Well, I can tell you it's negative. Negative 3 was correct. Why? Because it goes down 3 and over 1. Down 3, over 1. Down 3, over 1. Okay, so the slope of that thing was negative 3. Therefore, that's the equation. What do you need? Slope, y-intercept. That's the y-intercept. That's the slope. Yep. It's going down 3 and over 1. Or if you want, you could say it's going down 6 and over 2. If you want to say it's going down 6 and then over 2, do you get down 6 and over 2? 6 over 2 reduces to 3, so it's the same thing. If you go down 6 and over 2, it's the same exact thing as if you went down 3 and over 1. First you go down 3 and over 1, then you go down another 3 and over 1. That's the same as down 6 and over 2. So either way it would work. All right, next one. Number 68. Everybody look at number 68. Remember how I said that you're going to have to solve for y a lot? There it is again. 3x plus 5y equals 50. How do I get y alone? I've got two things by the y. I got this 5 and I got this 3x. Which one should I do? The 3x is correct. And when I take away 3x, take away 3x. Draw the line. 5y equals and I like to write the x first because that's the way we usually have it in our equations is the x is in that spot. Okay? So is x alone? Or sorry, is y alone? No, it's close though. What do I get rid of? The 5. Divide 5. Divide 5. Divide 5. Cancels. And if you can simplify that right there, you'll have it. I feel like I should leave you something to do on that problem. Simplify that down and you'll have it. Those are all solved for y's. I told you, the number one thing on the test. Like, seriously, if you can solve for y, you're probably going to get one-fourth of the problems right. Like, that's that big of a thing. It happens all the time. It's not half the test, but it's like... So, three... Oh, is this a 50? Yeah, you're right. I copied it wrong. My bad. Sorry, that's a 50. Not a 5. Sorry, 50 divided by 5. Oopsie. All right. Now move on to number 72. It's in that box where it starts with 71, except we're doing the even. So it says the slope is 3 over 2. Oh, these are the easiest in the kind in the world. If you can remember that parallel means the same slope. If you are parallel... Oh, I can't spell parallel at all. Anyway... Uh, slope of P line. That means parallel. The slope of a parallel line to this, this is number 72, is parallel means the same, so it's the same. But what about perpendicular? Negative, yep. And then 2 over 3. Very good. Perp. The perpendicular kind? are opposite reciprocal, opposite and flipped. What if it's just a number? How do you flip a number? Yeah, so if it says like 6, then you'd say like 1 over 6. Very good. All right, moving on. Another kind. Number, oh wait, this whole section's parallel perpendicular still. That's awesome because those are so easy. If you don't get it, please ask. I'll help you one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, moving on to number 82. Number 82 says, determine if they are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Ah, my favorite kind. These are so easy, because if they're parallel, they're, they're just the same. So, is this have the same slope 
as that. Well, here's the slopes. That's the slope, and that's the slope, because these are both solved for y. Are those slopes the same? No, so it's not parallel. And it's not perpendicular either, because if this had been a flip of this and negative, then it would be perpendicular. But it's not parallel, and it's not perpendicular either. So it's a neither. Good. You can say neither, or you can say neither. Yes, sir? Not one-on-one. -on -one. I'm still teaching. I got a video going here, so I'll help you one-on-one -on -one later. Moving on to number 88. Everybody get to 88. Number 88 says y equals negative 1 fourth x minus 3. But then it has this 0, 7 after it. 0, negative 7. What does it want? I'm reading the directions. It says find the equation of a line that's parallel and a line that's perpendicular to it, but passes through the given point. All right. Parallel means same. Say it. Parallel means what? Same. Got to get that through your head. Why? Because then we need the we need the slope to be the same. Y equals negative one fourth x. There. Now I made this slope the same. Yes. And this tells you what y to have. See how that's in the y spot? This is x. This is y. It's saying, hey, y is negative seven. So y is negative seven. There we go. Exactly, which would be, okay, so what's this? Four. Good. Yep. Good. That's it. I hope that those are easy for you. And if they're not, please ask me. I'll help you one-on-one. -on -one. We're rapidly approaching the end of what we need to do today. We decided we'd get through 100 today. Nice round number. All right, so number 96. Oh, got a question back there? Yes. For perpendicular, you stick with the same. This number needs to be the same here and here. For perpendicular, you just change the slope to be opposite and flipped. So leave the 7 as 7. All right, moving on to number 98. 98. There's only a few ways that lines can cross. If they cross then it's so simple. The answer is where they crossed. That dot right there, where they crossed, that's the answer. All right, so how could they make it more complicated? Sometimes on the test, we will give you lines that don't cross. So what's the solution to that? No solution. Now, if you leave it blank, that's wrong. Do you get what I'm saying? Some kids think, oh, well, there's no solution, so I won't write anything. you got to say no solution. If you want to abbreviate it, I can even take that. S-O-L-N is a typical abbreviation of solution. But if they cross, there's no solution. Sorry, sorry, sorry. If they don't cross, there's no solution. If they cross, it's just where they crossed. So here's two lines. You should ask yourself, where did they cross? And I think the only trouble some kids have is they have a hard time saying that point. Well, that point is 1 over and up like 7. 1 comma 7. You got to know how to say the points right where they crossed. So I bet you, I, seriously, I mean, I got to think everybody can tell where two lines cross. But the question is whether you'll say the point right. So you get how people can say this backwards and think that it's like up 5 and over 10, where it was really over, five, over 10 and up 5. It's easy to get those two confused. They're just backwards from each other. But one's right and one's wrong. This one is over 10, way over, and only up a little. So, all right. If you have any trouble with where points are, you get them mixed up, you can always ask me right before the test and say, this dot here, would this be like 5 comma 10, or is it 10 comma 5? But once the test starts, we can't tell you, because that's your job. You're supposed to know how to read those points. Last thing that lines can do is be on top of each other. If it's on top of each other, then that means the two lines weren't parallel, weren't perpendicular, but they were the same line. 
If you're actually on top of each other, then they're the same line. So then what's the solution? There are infinite solutions. Yeah, you may, do you remember the, yeah, the sideways eight, you got it, the infinity sign. If they're on top of each other, there's infinite solutions because it touches an infinite number of times because the lines go forever, right? So there's either this, and that's the solution, that, or there's infinite solutions, or this, and there's no, well, actually, those look kind of like they would touch. I better make them really parallel. There. Those where there's no solution. Okay, that gets you up through problem 100. That means we'll finish off the rest of the packet when we come back, meet together again on Tuesday of next week. So you have a long weekend. Be smart for you to even go a little further. I know some of you have worked ahead in the packet. That'd be smart. But all I'm assigning for sure is up through 100, the evens. Okay, that's all I got for the video for today.